Hello YouTube. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to make this quick because it is starting to sprinkle again. Uh, if you've been following this channel for the last couple days, you know I've been working on the micro stealth camper, uh, trying to finish it up this weekend so I can start to test it out before I actually have to use it. Um, I was hoping to have it finished by today, but I couldn't do it because of the rain. It's been like raining all weekend. So I've had to build in between, uh, you know, when it, when it would stop raining. So where we're at right now, um, I have gone ahead and made it so it will sleep two people. Now in testing it out, what I found was that my feet, when I lay down like this, actually extend up through the front. So it kind of dangles out to here and I'm 5'10". So, it, it looks like it, it's not going to, I don't know if it'll accommodate my wife. She's really small. But um, I think she can sleep on this side. So it's going to have to be tested, you know, with two people. But I think it'll do. Uh, it's got the full width of the, the mattress. And what I did, and I actually have more storage now than before, was I moved the drawers and stuff. Uh, everything had to be custom made because the vehicle's small. And you're trying to utilize the, the entire space. So I built, like, some custom shelving here and stuff to mount. You know, so you can clip on the fans. So you can have fans blowing right at you. Uh, there's one on that side, one on this side. And I'm going to be installing some um, other items like cup holders and things like that. This light, you know, so you got a little light here, a little night light. Um, you also have some storage here and stuff for like vehicle emergencies. All of this stuff would have to come out, sadly, if you need to access a spare tire. But I think you can just pull it all out. If you have to, you can take this whole thing out. Uh, the build is done in such a way that I didn't really install it into the vehicle. I mean, I put it in the vehicle, but I didn't, like, screw things in. If you notice, like, the shelving and stuff, it's it mounted to the platform itself. See, the platform is where I'm mounting everything on. Because I'm trying not to screw things in. Like, I could have screwed the, uh, the fans directly into the vehicle's um, plastic, but decided not to do that. Right now you can see I'm watching TV. I don't, I'm not really watching. I just wanted to show you how it all works. I did have to modify the TV layout because what I found when I was testing it out when I was laying down is if my wife is laying down, there's a chance her foot could kick through and break the TV. I've already broken two of these TVs already. So the TV can't really be mounted straight back if you have two people. Now if you're a single person, you can do that. So I had contemplating making a little slide out that goes all the way to the front and mounting the TV in the front, but then decided that might be a little too complicated to slide it in and out and move it and all sorts of weird stuff. So I came up with kind of a, a, an adaptation that I think works. As you can see, this is like if I was laying down watching this single by myself, this works fine. You know, I, I got the big screen TV there to watch. Um, this is um, actual HD TV. It's not... Um, it's not internet streaming or anything. It's over the air. Some kind of Japanese thingy. <laughs> but anyhow, what I did was I modified it. And this is going to be cleaned up a little bit. But instead of mounting it on that, that back panel like it was before, it's now mounted on a side panel, which allows it to swing out like this. And I can still use it for video gaming and stuff, you know, like sitting outside. Like if, if I'm sitting out here at a bench or something and I set up a tent, I can watch TV and stuff. So it, it still has the same functionality that it did before. It's also been lifted a little bit, so it clears the bed mattress. But what's neat about it is it now can fold sideways. I can't do it like this, but basically, try to do it one-handed here. See how it goes like that now? So it can go like this on the side when it's in storage mode. So now two people can lay down and the TV's over to the side there. And, you know, unless she's kicking that way, <laughs> you know, just say, hey, honey, uh, don't kick that way. Or I might build some kind of barrier because I've broken two of these TVs already. So by putting it so it goes right up to the side window there out of the way, um, you know, there's less likelihood of a person kicking it while they're sleeping, which can happen. But if you have it at the end right there, definitely someone's going to kick it. Now, I could potentially cut down that front area a little bit and give myself a little bit more visibility. I'm still debating how far I want to take it. But remember, we're trying to make it um, functional first, but also we want it to have decent form so it looks nice. So I'll be painting it, I think, um, probably all black. Even though you can't really see these drawers, I'll probably paint them. I may paint to keep them red or I'll paint them black. I don't know, probably black, just to change up the look a little bit. But uh, storage is, um, is really good here, okay? 
I have my storage for the jumper cable. I'm gonna include some car storage type stuff back here. This is the uh, carbon monoxide detector, which I think is standard, a standard feature you should have in a, um, when you're living in a vehicle, okay? Because producing carbon monoxide when you run the vehicle even when you're parked and you're not running somebody could park next to you and it could creep in so this will be mounted over here on the side see i've made it so that there's a little bit of room for storage as well as mounting things and you don't have to mount it onto the vehicle you're mounting onto the frame which all comes out like all this can be disassembled and the vehicle becomes a regular car again but even without it being in a regular car this can be lifted up and you see we got the the panel here so the the picture that you saw on the thumbnail, that shows how it can still be used as a car to carry cargo. So I just went grocery shopping, bought a, about four or five, six bags of food, a bunch of water and drinks, and it all fit back here when I lift this up, you know, and it becomes a shelf for carrying things. So um, the other thing is that the, the storage here. So I got a little drawer here that's right now not mounted yet, but sitting on the table. So I have a picnic table I can bring out. I have a table, a chair here that comes out, well, that can be used. But I'm also, I got a second chair that I picked up from the garbage, you know. Uh, somebody threw this away at the trash. Can you believe that? This little blue collapsible one. Not this, this one too is from the trash. This is a collapsible one that's nothing wrong with it. They just got rid of it. So what I'll probably do is, uh, hope I didn't get Corona from it. <laughs> I'm probably going to spray it down with uh, alcohol and let that dry. Not not right now, though. But I did grab it already, so I don't know. But um, that'll go in here. So this will carry, this will carry a, a picnic table. It'll have a, a picnic table, you know, that can be used as a picnic table for cooking and other stuff. I do need to fix this handle. And it'll have two chairs. And I think I can slide, like, a fishing pole. So my son can go fishing with this vehicle with me. You know, we'll be able to carry all his fishing gear. And it'll continue to function. Has uh, drawers here for clothing, um, cooking stuff, whatever. And there's plenty of storage now because we lifted it up. So underneath here, you can see all the space. You can see I haven't even organized it yet, but there's room up on the other end as well as under here. Now this drawer actually slides under here the, the two drawers set there, it slides under here and then um, you have the access to this drawers when you're using it in a uh, regular car mode, you know, passenger mode, because this vehicle will still carry one driver and two passengers, possibly three if one of them's small or you got two small people in the back. But really designed for now only carrying two passengers, the driver and two passengers. But that'll come back this way so you can access the drawers. All of this stuff, of course, is still available, the charging system. All of this, um, you know, was built before from the other, the other build that I scrapped. But I think this is a better design anyways, because that'll all be locked down, so you have drawers there. Sadly, you know, I could face them out this way, which I might do, and then move the um, solar charge controller maybe up here or something. Uh, that way, you can access those drawers without lifting the seats, you know, going under the seat. So that's probably what I'm gonna do, even though it's not the most ideal setup. But you know, you're talking limited space, so you got you gotta make the most of it. On this other side, you have all the space here, which which is right now not not open, but it will be. So I got all this space on this side that's gonna be left open. And the reason for leaving it open is I, I don't know if you guys heard me telling about the clearance on here. It's very small. Okay. You're talking when the seat is flat like that, you got a height of about three and a half feet, which means you can barely just sit up. A grown up can just squat in here. And that, that squatting is important because, see, the toilet is back here, which you can access from back here. You can take out. I think you can take out. I'll have to make sure you can take it back out there. But uh, the toilet is right there, and you can access it to bring it here in an emergency. Or I might put it here where you can easily grab it, somewhere where you can grab it. But this whole seat thing comes up. See how it lifts up? And it's designed, it'll be designed to be a bench. So when you park somewhere, you can set it up as either a little table or an actual bench to sit on. But um, at night, all you really do when you gotta go to the bathroom, you gotta hop out of the bed, flip this up real quick, remove this top part, you know, flip it over to the side here on this side, because this whole area will be empty. It's the bathroom. Uh, and then pull out your portable emergency toilet, use it, bag up, tie up, lock up, 
you know, because you got to control the smell. I'll talk about dealing with that when we do the bathroom episode. But um, then you can just flip everything back. And I got to check it out to make sure you can actually do it inside the car without having to get out. <laughs> because that's the whole point. Yeah, it's going to be like, you know, for emergency use, like you wake up in the middle of the night, you're not feeling so well. And so it shouldn't take more than a few seconds to do this. Because if, if it takes more than a minute, you might have an accident. Um, I do need to still work on the uh, the kitchen. But just a little preview. It's not going to be too elaborate. I want to keep it simple. So it's going to have the rice cooker. And you can basically just take all this stuff up and out and out of the way so that a passenger can sit here. So I don't want it to be too complicated. Basically, it's not going to be bolted down. It's going to be set up, secured so it doesn't fly around. But when you have two passengers, this kitchen lifts up. And sadly, it won't fit directly under here. I checked the height. It's a little bit too tall. But you can set it back here, you know, out of the way. And um, the passenger can sit up here. So two people, two people is what this vehicle is designed for. Two adults. One shorter than the other. <laughs> so you'll be able to sit and drive in a full-size comfort, okay? And if you're going on a little trip, you can carry a kid or another grown-up, two kids possibly, a grown-up or a grown-up back here, and they can actually watch TV and play video games while they're back here, um, you know, sitting. And, of course, we got the, the fans still. So there's three fans that are being included standard. It will have, oh, as, as far as the power, I had to move the battery pack from up there, so... I, I don't have it shown here yet. You'll see it in the real tour, but the battery pack will actually go down below. There's a portable battery pack that I'm building that can be pulled out of the vehicle. So, like, let's say you needed your tools or something and you didn't want to have, you couldn't take your vehicle to where you're working, like you're out in the woods or somewhere building <laughs> a little secret hideout in the woods, like another yurt or something. But if you're out there building and you need electric power, there's a portable little power pack that I uh, am building, and I'll show how it's built, that'll plug in there um, so it can charge up off the system. And while it's plugged into the vehicle, this car will have 200 amp hours of standard house battery power, 300 when it's connected in, you know, to the vehicle system, but basically 200 with 100 usable. So a very powerful system, the same one that was inside Little Blue. It should allow me to run the TV, the fans, the lights, and everything else. In addition, of course, we have these little lights, which are really cool. Um, they run off batteries, and they have LEDs, but you basically, you know... So this will be mounted could be mounted like that but i'm going to mount it on here I'm, I'm trying not to i'm trying not to screw anything you know and of course you got the the antenna there is what's allowing the tv reception that little white thing is an antenna and it's just j jammed in there <laughs> i'm not even screwing it or anything now as far as window coverings i'm still debating if i want to go with uh, um what's that the tinfoil stuff I forget what that's just called. I'm debating that's what a lot of van dwellers use, but I don't like it. I think it looks tacky. Um, it makes it look like you're living in your vehicle, <laughs> which you are. But uh, I'm debating if I want to use that or if I want to get um, the corrugated uh, plastic stuff. I go with it. Coroplast, I think that's what it's called. Or I might just go ahead and use curtains like before because I still have the, the curtains from Little Blue, even though they're all tattered and raggedy looking. I may figure out how to mount them here somehow. Yeah, trying to figure out how to mount it. Um, and the reason for using curtains versus those other things, the problem when you have um, the, the window covering is when you take it down, you got to store them somewhere. So they take up space. And remember, I'm trying to build this like a house. So you don't want to have to spend 10 minutes setting it up, taking it down, setting it up, taking it down every time you want to use it. You want to just hop in and use it. So I'm leaning more towards trying to come up with a, a um, curtain system. So that way, you know, you can just slide the curtain open, slide the curtain shut, right? You don't have to, you don't have to take up and put down. I know it seems like I'm being lazy, but believe me, maybe some people don't mind, you know, the minute or two that it takes to put the, um, the window coverings up and stuff and then storing it and all that other stuff. If it's already up on the window and all you're doing is just sliding it, it you know, it's no take up or whatever. So I can put the, the, it worked fine in a little blue. I may do it in here, even though, try to figure out how to mount it on the weird shaped windows and stuff like that without, um, without screwing things in. I don't know if that's gonna be possible, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up for a solution. So stay tuned for that. Um, I think that's about it. There's, there's more coming up. I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna do about that wall. If I'm gonna remove it or if I'm gonna um, do something with it. 
But you can see, I think this is a much better design with the, the TV that goes to the side. It won't be in this mode if you're, you know, if you're laying down like a single traveler. So this is a really good, um, I think a really good setup for a single person that may occasionally have a guest. <laughs> so you can travel, you know, together, that is. Now, uh, I will warn you, I don't know if you can see the clearance here when the, the bed is up. This is only about two and a half feet, okay? And on that end, it's like two feet. So it's really bad. I haven't decided I'm gonna make it so that the head, maybe the head can come this way because I have a, um, a moon roof here. So it'd be nice if I can extend this, which I might design, so that a single person can lay here and just look up at the stars at night, you know? Uh, and if you wanna watch TV, your head goes this way. And of course you're laying down and it's nice and cozy and you can watch TV. So, Internet and stuff will be done through Roku, you know, so, and um, for Wi-Fi access will be done through the phone. So it's basically a little house. It's got a bathroom. It's got a kitchen. I'm not going to bother with um, wiring for like pumps and running water and stuff because I think that's overkill. I see all these people. I don't know. I guess because it looks good and it makes uh, people you uh, watch a YouTube video. If you install complete systems where you have a faucet that you turn on and the water runs. But then you have to deal with a, an electric pump that can possibly go bad, leaks that can happen. Uh, my system's probably going to use um, just jugs of water. I might go a little fancy and get a jug with the, the spigot on it that you flip on and off, but even those can leak, you know. But I might do that just to be a little fancy. I mean, I could install all that if I wanted to and spend money on it, but I think it's overkill. You know, you're, you're putting in stuff that... Come on, just lift up the jug and pour it. <laughs> you know, it's like a gallon of water. I, and if I need five gallons, I buy five of those things. But um, the other thing is like this. If, if you're going like extended stay, you know, like in the desert or whatever, uh, BLM land. See, so you're a single person, which means you won't lift all this except for the bathroom. And even if you were going to do that, you know, for the bathroom, you might be able to go in the front seat if you're a single person. You know, like... Um, bathroom up there so this whole area here which is a huge space can be used for storing water and food so conceivably if it's a single person and you're not going to flip things around you could make it so that you have all this storage here for food which means this vehicle conceivably could keep you off grid for one to two weeks potentially one to two weeks for one person um for two people you know you're looking at maybe two or three days if, if you store everything on here and you take it out when you set up camp and things like that but um if you're by yourself and you're you're urban stealth camping you really don't need more than like one or two days with the food two days maybe i may try to add some luxury items like a little refrigerator so you know it'll be a little 12 volt one of those um the one my wife got me possibly or the console from little blue the little red console one so that you can have um cold soda cold water cold whatever it's an interesting little show there looks like a uh, japan possibly another destination for the future yeah i know you guys can't see anything but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and sign out because i tend to blabber on and on i hope you guys enjoyed this video i am gonna look at your comments real quick patricia good to see you on here i will be doing some more cooking on here just to show you how it cooks how you can cook in this vehicle Either while driving using the front uh, kitchen. This this vehicle is going to have a back kitchen. I'm thinking of um, installing a sliding, if there's enough room here, a sliding drawer that comes out. Not drawer, but uh, I mean, like you could install a kitchen here that slides out if you're really handy, you know. I, I'm not going to do too much because this is a really quick, cheap build. But I may put in something potentially i haven't decided yet i don't know how complicated i want to make this the more stuff you add the more complicated it gets the more complicated it gets the more things can break down the more heavy the vehicle becomes and you know when you start loading it up with all sorts of stuff it becomes really heavy right now it accommodate two people camping two people sitting because that that folding chair that i just found will fit in here and i think i can put the fishing pole and squeeze it diagonal that way a small fishing pole for my son so he can go fishing and you know, uh, there, there's enough room here for clothes and gear and tools, I think. And um, we'll be mounting drink holders so you can lay here and chill and watch TV and have a drink. And if I can get the uh, refrigerator working, you can have ice cold drink. <laughs> so, let me continue here, look, look at your... Um... All right, Maggie got a detector, that's great. Yeah, I think it, it's worth the investment, you know, 15, 20 bucks could save your life and you know the hope is you never have to use it but i've had it go off at least once in my three years 
And I've heard, you know, on the Living in a Van um, Facebook group, some people, the alarm did save them. So, you know, it's one of those things that you have and you don't think about. But when it saves your life, then you're grateful you have it. The other thing you want to do when you have one is make sure you test it, you know, every so often. Because the, the battery should be changed out, like, at least once every six months or a year. You push the button and it beeps to test. It should go off. That, that means it's still working, okay? And it, it looks kind of yellow because uh, plastics tends to yellow. But for those of you who want to know how to clean it or make it white again, just set it out in the sun. The sun will bleach it. So I'm going to be letting this get bleached in the sun. You know, um, it's called retro brighting, and I got that from the computer groups. They retro bright the old computers. So this looks kind of, it looks a little less yellow now than it did earlier, but it was kind of yellowed from, you know, sitting in the darkness in the car. But when you put this out in the sun for a while, like a day or two, it'll get its color back. So if you have plastic like this that you want to make it look nice again, set it out in the sun, which I'll be doing. So that's pretty much it for now. As I add more features, I will introduce them and, and show it off, and hopefully soon <laughs> you'll see the finished product and it should be uh my hope is that it'll look like a little home a little tiny house on wheels not um something that is crappy even this like i'm gonna do little touches like i'm gonna smooth this out you know make it like rounded and maybe paint it and make it look nice these are just regular hinges from walmart you know and um by the way if, if you don't know this little tv mount i think it's from walmart also it's like fifteen twenty dollars but you can flip it you know like you undo this bolt and then you can flip the tv upside down what you're doing is like see the arm can swing to the left or to the right and this will allow it to go the opposite direction right. or maybe i didn't even have to do that i don't know why i did that <laughs> maybe i did it for no reason i flipped it i don't know why i flipped it oh yeah it's so the tilt see the the tilt here the tilt should be on the bottom so you can tilt the tv up or down and if you if you're mounting it upside down then it lets you tilt down you know but i have it now so it can the tv can tilt up and down see and the reason it's not mounted higher it has to do with clearance i had to make sure that this would slide in and out although i may have room to go up a little bit more so i could go up conceivably another uh quarter of an inch but i don't think that'll make a difference i just needed it to clear and i think having it sit on the mattress a little bit is good it helps stabilize it and keeps all the weight from the hinges you know otherwise originally i had this piece of board wider longer and you can see it broke trying to screw it in because it's the little light panel board all the wood and everything you see here is recycled it's from little blue the, the various cabinets, the various be be bed on Little Blue. I basically recycled everything. My expenditure so far has been hinges. Okay. I bought hinges. I bought um, a little thingy here for about seven five or seven dot four ninety five or something from Goodwill. Um, some screws, about $2 worth of screws. And metal bracers, which I haven't used yet, which will be used to, to make this thing a bench. So this part right here comes off and becomes a bench. So you can use that as a little bench or a little table when you get to your campground area. Um, I also bought this cooler for, I think I paid like uh, $10, $10 or $15 for the green cooler because it's the right height. You know, it's the perfect height for setting up my kitchen here. So overall this build so far, I've spent a whopping what? Probably $15. It's like a $15 build. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because I already had all the other stuff. I had the mattress. I had um, the wood. But if you had to do this from scratch, if you're wondering what the cost is, I'm going to say less than $100 um, if you buy used stuff like I do. Well, if you buy used stuff from, from Goodwill and stuff like that, like that TV is like $15 or $20, maybe $25 at the most. The fans are expensive because they were brand new from Walmart at $15 each, I think. $12 to $15. And I had three of them. And then you got your batteries and your inverters. You know, the, the switch here, if you wanted to make an automatic system, you can use what's called a battery isolator, but I don't bother because I want it so I can turn it on and off. Right now it's running off the uh, house battery, which is at 12.5, according to this meter. I don't know what it says on that other meter there, but, uh, and I got a 750 watt inverter. So I can charge the system up right now, which I probably will because, you know, the TV's running all this time here. Yeah, but I think this is, uh, this is probably my best build so far. Especially for a micro camper. It's my first micro camper build. Well, actually, it was a third attempt. Because, you know, we went through two other design changes when I decided I didn't want to move things around and I just wanted to make it so that, um, 
when when you know we go out camping i don't have to do anything and i wanted to keep it and it's also better this way i think even for a single person because now i have a double bed <laughs> all right everybody thank you for joining me i am gonna take a look at your um your comments here and answer any questions you may have hey timothy i don't know if you know this vehicle's almost the same as yours a little bit smaller than yours so you could potentially um you know build something like this if you haven't you know if you want to build out your little camper you might find that that may work just fine you might not need a minivan you might be able to travel in the you know if it's just you by yourself or your wife and you this will hold two people have tv have cooking have everything so you know doing it like this of course you got that little space here this is bad sleeping when you lay down it's very tight let's see the the tv look how close the tv is to the roof so that you know that's the one drawback you don't want to but even in a van i mean it's you're only going to get another extra foot or so <laughs> so you really on the micro campers and minivan campers and stuff you don't want to live in them okay you want to live out of them so you have them so you can lay down comfortably watch tv relax a little bit but you don't want to be spending all day just laying down watching tv and this thing actually does flip up let me show you how fast it can flip up um well, maybe I won't show right now. Wait till it's done. Because I got all this crap that needs to be moved out, you know, doing construction and stuff. But you can see that's the, the back of the seat. It actually flips up and locks right here. So I can only build up to that line. See, the, pan, the, the thing only goes up that line. And then this is like a shelving. So I might have to raise that up or something. I don't know what happened there. Things got uneven. But anyhow, um, basically, the seat folds up. And then you have another passenger seat here. And then all of this stuff which is just the, the, the bedding, flips to the back. So it takes like less than 10 seconds to, to, to convert. And normally I wouldn't convert it, okay? I would only convert it if I'm picking up my kids for the weekend and I gotta carry two people. So until next time, everyone, take care. God bless you all. I'm looking here. Um, hey, Hobbs, good to see you back on here. I just, just scrolling through here. Ms. MJ says more people are living in their vehicles now. Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm putting this stuff out even though it's not done yet. Wanted to show people and then I also didn't want to show the build because this is a, my first build of this vehicle. So I wasn't quite sure what would work and what wouldn't work. But now I really do like this design because of how versatile it is and you, you know like using it as a regular vehicle just flip this thing up and you have all this space here to carry groceries and or any items you buy. And if I was buying like big items, I could just lay it on top of the mattress as is like this, flat, you know, just lay whatever item up here. So it's a really good design because it's still a regular vehicle. And this is without solar panels and stuff. I may put the solar panel on because it has a solar charging up here on the roof just to show people how it's done. And also to carry an extra luggage, right? you know, um, there's a squirrel up on my car, my, my RV. He better not be chewing through my lines. <laughs> that squirrel up there. You see him? He... Hey, you. You see the squirrel up on my, uh, the roof? Hey, get out of there. <laughs> that explains all the funny noises. I think it's a, a peeping squirrel watching me at night. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm laying there, and I hear, it's a little squirrel trying to get in. So anyhow, I'm going to let you guys go. <laughs> let me just scroll through here and see if there's any uh, questions or anything. Yeah, Hobbs was saying that stuff is called Reflectix. I'm, I'm trying to avoid Reflectix, even though, you know, it is an uh, insulator. But when you put it on the side windows, and in the front window, it looks normal, especially in Florida. People do this all the time. But when you put it on the side, it definitely looks like you're hiding in there. <laughs> So I, I'm, I'm leaning more towards um, curtains, you know, so I can open and close it, and it'll look like a little, it'll look like a little home inside. Just scrolling through here. All right, scrolling through. Some people are suggesting cork board, and. Now you said she uses poster board. I did initially when I built this out. Remember when I did it temporarily, I used poster board and it worked. But I didn't really like it. I thought 
you know, when you lay in there, it looks, it blacks it out on the outside. The black poster board made it look like it's um, tinted windows. But when you're inside looking at it, it just looks cheap. You know, it looks like you're living in a car, <laughs> which you are. But I'm trying to make it not look like a car. I'm trying to make it, when you're inside, look and feel like you're living in a tiny home, a tiny little space. I'm just going through here. Uh, Miss MJ says to tint the windows, and then we'll tint. That thought did occur to me. I, I'm debating to do that because I think they charge a lot. I was thinking of doing it by myself, you know, doing it my own self. But I tried it before, like 20, 30 years ago when I had a little car when I was younger. And it turned out terribly. So I don't know about doing it myself. And paying somebody to do it, I think they're going to want 150 to 300 bucks just to do my tint. I think, I think the going rate is like 150 bucks or more. And so far this build has cost me like 15 or $20, <laughs> okay? To just do the windows for $150 to me is overkill. So uh, I'm leaning more and more towards um, curtains because then curtains can be moved and not. I may have to screw in things or, you know, figure out how to mount it on my, um, my frame here, come up with a system that works. But um, the, the idea is, let me shut all this off here, shut the system down. But uh, basically, shut off the inverter. It's the inverter there. Shut that off. Basically, the, the whole idea of all this is to make it so that um, it doesn't seem like a car. You know, because, I mean, you gotta admit it, we're in a car. But um, when you, if you do it right, I think it'll look like, not like a car, but a tiny little room. Or a really elaborate coffin. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and, and sign out because this is going on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Somebody says, uh, plastic dipping the windows. Remember, I'm trying to not make anything, and I don't want to spend a lot of money, although that is an idea. You know, if you, you might be able to paint the windows with that plastic dip paint or whatever and then peel it off. But I'm thinking if you roll the windows up and down with that dip on it, it'll scrape off. Uh, let's see, just going to go ahead and scroll on it out. Sharon wants to know where the RV is. RV's right there. Little Blue's right there. All right. I'm going to go ahead and sign out. Take care, everybody. I'm just scrolling through real quick to see if there's any... Um... Sailing Doodles is making a new channel called Vanning Doodles. Be sure to check that out. Hey, Sailing Doodles, you might want to put a link on it onto your main page. And when people go there, they can click on that link or something. I don't know if you if you know Sailing Doodles has a really big channel, <laughs> so <laughs> you might want to check out his channel. It's got very interesting content on there. And Timothy Mo Bang for your bucks is about to take on a crazy adventure with the minivan. So make sure you follow him. He's got a lot of cool builds and also some money saving ideas. And he's been testing a lot of the um, the items that may or may not be useful for van dwellers. Uh, in addition to that, I think lately he's been doing a lot of um, economical repair videos and maintenance videos for doing things like taking care of your refrigerator. Uh, basically things that'll save you money. So if you like saving money, make sure you check out Mobang for your bucks. Hey, Alan! <laughs> Good to see you on here. Uh, let's continue here. Just scrolling through. Uh, Artisan Coffee wants to know how you sneak in without being an Olympian gymnast. I want to show you why it was built the way it was built, okay? Because this is a real question. You'll see the bed doesn't come all the way out to the end. This is done on purpose. See that? The, the, the mattress and stuff? Mattress overextends a little bit, like about an inch or two. But I left a little stepping thing here so you can actually climb up like this and lean in. So it was done that way because it's a, it's a very tiny space. You really don't know unless you try to build one and you go, holy schmoly, this is small. But I left it so you have kind of a little stepping area. And also, I had to leave this whole gap here because when you try to use a bathroom, you can't use it in two. <laughs> I, I don't know how you would do number two in two feet of space. So I need my three and a half. So this area is made so that it'll be empty. And at night, in an emergency, you flip this thing up, it comes up to the side, which I'll demonstrate. Not, I'm not gonna do number two, but I'm gonna demonstrate how it would be used. But you have all this height clearance here, so you can actually have a bathroom to use. And then, you know, how you dispose of the stuff so you're not sitting there stinking all night. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it's designed like that. It's designed so it has room to get in and out. Otherwise, 
you're right. You have this little hole here. That's only two feet. <laughs> you have to do a running dive and dive in. But you don't have to on this one. You just climb in. And from the front, you know, you can also sneak through here. You can come through that gap and come right on back to the back seat. So it was designed with that. Artisan wants to know that's how you, I just showed how you did it. So he asked, I showed. You, you, if, you, if you park somewhere in stealth, you just climb through the seat and come through the, the center area there. If you don't care about stealth and you go through the side door here, because see, it's not, see? It doesn't come all the way to the edge. It gives you a little stepping room. And Idoje found Badia. Yeah, my question is, if I, you know, get to Thailand, are they going to have Badia there? It looks like all the, the seasoning and stuff they make fresh. So I may have to have a supplier <laughs> sending me Badia from the United States. Well, you're going to love it. Uh, the Badia, and, you know, has all sorts of seasoning in it. And, but it does have MSG. So, you know, if you're allergic to that, it could be a problem. But most people don't really have an allergy to MSG. I think that's... They could, but honestly, I think most people don't. Um, I've been using body all the time, but then, you know, Asian cooking usually has MSG. Let's see. Gordy says plug in question. This vehicle doesn't have to have, doesn't have to be plugged in because it charges its own electricity. But if you wanted to know how you plug it in, it uses a regular standard uh, house plug. So if you didn't look through your inverter system here, all you have to do is just unplug this from there and plug an extension to like a jack, you know, a power jack from um, an RV jack or a house. Let's say, let's say you're going really cheap and you're traveling across the nation, but you have some friends or angels along the way that let you park in their driveway, which we might try to set up a network on pay it forward. People who do have a house that let car dwellers park at their yard or their house, their driveway, you could run an extension cord and plug that in and the whole house battery, I mean the whole house system works without the the battery. This thing is self-contained, so I don't even have to plug in. But, you know, if you're doing that, you can do that. And with this kind of space and stuff, if you get a small enough air conditioner, just, just giving some ideas here for people, you could potentially mount an air conditioner under here. You know, a little one, or in the back somewhere, instead of the drawers, see the drawers here? You could potentially mount air conditioner, you know, size the thing so that it'll hold the air conditioner or get a small little flat thin air conditioner. And you can have air conditioning. The, the issue will be trying to work out drainage and stuff issues. But I had shown how in little blue you could mount one back here. You know, it wouldn't be very stealth, but if you're like in Florida and you're staying at a friend's house and they let you use electricity, you could run air conditioning at night while you're sleeping. But what I find is with three fans blowing at me all night, running off the house battery system, which can be charged every day. And if I have solar panels installed, it's like free power. It's like self-contained. So I find the, the fans, even in Florida heat and humidity at night, more than adequate. Now, would you want to lay in this thing in the daytime in the, the heat? No, don't do that. I've made previous videos on what to do to handle the heat in Florida. Basically, you want to go into air-conditioned places, like whether it be at the mall, shopping somewhere, a library, or out in nature, hiking and doing things. That's the whole point of being mobile and being able to just go anywhere in your vehicle. You don't want to lay here and sleep in this. I mean, you want to lay in the car all day long. That's why even like wanting to play video games and stuff in here or watch TV. Well, you can lay down and watch TV at night. But if you want to play video games or whatever, you could slide that out. The, I've got like a video game system that has like five, 6,000 games on it. Pull my little chair out and sit and play. You got all this comfort, you know. Um, you don't want to try to sit in there and play, although it can be done. If you, um, if you flip the bed up, then you flip that bed up here, the mattress here, and then put this in the back out of the way, and the seat goes up. Then you got a little sitting area and you can sit and play. So, you know, this, this build was designed to be versatile. Just scrolling through here. Uh, Idoji, you want to know if you can, I can put a link to Tim's channel. I think I had it on some videos. I may have to include it back. But if you click on his avatar, his icon, or you can search, you know, look at the way he spells it. He spells it, spells it funny. Mo Bang, M O B A N G space. F-O-Y-O-B-U-C-K-S. So you could type Mobang for your butt. It's M-O-B-A-N-G space F-O-Y-O-B-U-C-K-S channel. 
space channel. It should bring up his channel. I had to find it too. And originally, I guess he had his video set for adult for some reason. And it was making it not show up on the searches. So it should be easier to find his channel now because I think he's reset a lot of the videos, if not all of them, to regular. Because I think he... I don't think I've ever heard him cuss on his videos. <laughs> you hear me cussing on here all the time. And, you know, my my thing's just set like normal. It's not like I, I cuss every word. Uh... Corey, uh, is there anything the same as Nadia? Well, Nadia, I think you have to go through the closet to get there. But I think that um, there's this pond where if you dive into it at the right time when the moon is in a, a certain orbit and the planets are lined up just right, you can go to the portal to the other side. I think they did a story on that in the Twilight Zone. It's not like Nadia, but it's like a magic place where there's an old man like in a log cabin. <laughs> okay. Oh, you mean Badia. Badia, not Nadia. <laughs> they sell seasoning, all-purpose seasoning uh, at Dollar Tree and even Walmart. They have some that's similar. It's just called like all-purpose. And some of it has like Adobe instead of um, Badia. They made it A-D-O-B-E is uh, Adobe uh, seasoning. But it'll just say like all-purpose seasoning. And it basically has onions, um, salt, and a bunch of other stuff. One of them even has no salt in it. Just scrolling through real quick here before I sign out. Anyway, I am going to go ahead and sign out. Thank you all for joining me. I hope you guys are having a great day. Hopefully soon. <laughs> I don't know when, but soon this will actually be done. And you will actually see the vibe completed. So until next time, everyone take care. God bless you all. Please stay safe and... Um, Remember, <laughs> try to enjoy your life. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye now.